Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by. Today I've got an image that's a road shot from New Mexico, and I thought I'd walk through and edit here and share some ideas and things I think about as I'm editing road shots specifically, because for me, a road shot, obviously uh, you've got a road. <laughs> that's, uh, that's why it's a road shot, I guess. But um, the road is the leading line that takes a viewer into the photo, and I tend to want these to be kind of impactful, kind of dramatic, um, you know, they don't always have to be, but I kind of like them that way. And of course it does depend on the road and what's in the, uh, distance, but here's my photo. And the first thing I think about is the composition and how do I get that right? And so in this case, I am going to go a 16 by nine and I'm going to do something about like that. But the other thing I think about here, and that is number one, you want to make sure that you're pretty much in the center of the road. So, you know, you can use this to kind of line up. Uh, this little um, mark here at the bottom, uh, you can use that to kind of line up and make sure. But the other thing I think about is the uh, this image 3D transform section. I think this can be really powerful. And for me, uh, you can move uh, in this one, you, you know, you can move the horizontal lines if you want to do something like that. But what I really liked was taking it left and that kind of stretches out the mountains a little bit to make them a little bit more impactful across the scene. So let me show you what it was like before. It seems like the mountains are further away. And as I drag this, it's kind of bringing them closer. So for me, it's kind of helping that composition. And then I might come in here and actually go this way and make sure I'm still kind of centered. And that was something um, that I like to do, especially on a shot like this. It really helps to kind of center me and create a little bit more impact. And now I think it's crooked. So let me straighten that real quick. Okay, so there we go. Now I've got my kind of base photo um, ready to go. Now, the next thing, of course, is, and these are things I think about in every photo, of course, but that's light and detail. So I'm gonna start with Enhance AI, and I'm gonna use Accent AI. And here I went like, you know, low 40s. Um, and then I also went with Sky Enhancer. And so obviously clouds can create a lot of drama in a photo, and clouds and mountains together with a road shot can create a very dramatic photo. This will, of course, be a bit of a dramatic um, edit because I have these dramatic elements in the shot, not just the road kind of leading off and curving off into the distance and disappearing, but you know, tall mountains and really dramatic clouds. So I'm going to amp that up a little bit, but Accent AI has helped me do that. So there it is before and after. Now keep in mind with Accent AI, it does more than just brighten the photo or you know, that sort of thing. It's impacting contrast, so that's light and dark, but it, it really impacts colors as well. And that's something to think about is, you know, what kind of color look do you want in your photo if you want a color look. Now I'm gonna go on to Smart Contrast here in the Light tool, and I'm gonna increase contrast a bit, and I'm gonna pull the highlights down a little bit, so maybe about like that, and then I'm gonna pull the shadows up. And so again, this is just balancing the light, and I'm using this in combination with Accent AI up here. Uh, well, I should say Enhance AI, because I use this Sky Enhancer as well. Uh, basically, I'm using light in combination with that to sort of get it looking the way I want it to look before I move on to the next tool, which is Structure AI. And in this case, because I have such dramatic clouds, I'll often use negative structure to soften up the look of clouds, but I just kind of like it, to be honest. Um, I mean, it's dramatic. It's a bit over the top. And right now, it looks a bit HDR. I'm going to make some adjustments that are going to help tame that a little bit. But again, I am going for a dramatic edit, so just keep in mind, are you going for a more subtle edit or dramatic edit? And that will, of course, impact how much intensity you choose on these various tools. Okay, so having done all that, you know, looking at the colors here, there's some blues, there's some yellows, there's some greens. I don't really like it in color, so this is where I've decided to make this one a black and white because I think monochrome can be really impactful and you can create really dramatic monochromes, as you may have seen me do here before. Uh, that would look terrible in color, frankly, but look pretty dramatic uh, and nice in monochrome. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the yellows down a little bit and reduce that luminance, but I'm going to increase the luminance of the blues. So this is just a little bit of a manipulation of the light. So, you know, because those underlying colors are in the image, this will allow you to further kind of refine how that looks. But I think if I turn this tool off, let me show you, there's what it looked like before, and that's what it looks like now. I think it looks better in monochrome than it did in color, and frankly, ever would in color, even if I did a whole bunch of stuff. So I like that. I am gonna pop into Denoise, and I don't use Denoise a ton here in Luminar. I mean, I think it's pretty good, but in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and get Luminosity Denoise, and I'm gonna go like into the 40s, 
And I feel like that's had a pretty nice impact. If you look at the before and then you look at the after, you can see a bit of that grain has been reduced. I like that. I think that's worked quite well, uh, quite well on this photo. So while I'm denoising, I'm also going to pop into details. What I want to do here is really kind of accentuate that road. And so I'm going to drag all three of these detail sliders to the right, but I'm going to paint it in because I don't want a lot of detail in the photo except for the road. And that's because it is your line that's leading you as a viewer into the photo. So I think a little crunch there is going to be good, um, but I don't want a lot of crunch anywhere else. And so I'm just going to do that real quick. And this is going to create a little bit more, um, I don't know, it's visual, but I want it to be a little tactile. Like I want it to feel kind of grungy and gritty. And I think adding that pop of detail there is really helping the viewer feel like, okay, I'm on the road and I can walk into that. But even though I use structure AI across the entire photo, I didn't want to use detail across the entire photo because I did denoise the sky and things like that. So it's a little bit of a balance. How over the top, crunchy, ominous do you want the clouds to be versus how crunchy and that sort of thing do you want the foreground to be? I want the foreground to be pretty crunchy. I wanted there to be a lot of drama in the sky, but I don't want it to be overly crunchy and noisy and kind of HDR looking. So it's a, it's a delicate dance like it is every time, just trying to balance those things in a photo. Okay, a couple of more things. Uh, next, I'm going to go to Super Contrast. And again, here, I'm just kind of manipulating the light. So I'm going to do like mid-30s here. I'm going to do uh, low 30s um, on mid-tones, and then also on shadows, I'm going to get into the 30s as well, this time about uh, you know, 37, 38. But I'm going to go back to the balance here. I actually ended up going negative on the balance for highlights and negative on the balance for mid-tones. Uh, not that much, maybe something about like that. And I went a little bit positive on the balance for shadows. Let me show you what this has done to the light in the photo. There it is before. And there it is after. Super Contrast is a really powerful tool. I love it. I think it's really popped that. And really the last thing I want to do is create a little bit better view into the photo. So this is going to be dodge and burn. I recommend going kind of low when I start. And I'm going to go ahead and lighten the road a little bit. And that is, again, this is your visual pathway into the photo. I just want to create a little bit brighter look for the viewer so they can feel like they can just visually flow into the shot. And I think I got that too bright. So I'm going to go ahead and reduce the overall amount here. Pull that down a little bit. I just wanted to brighten the road a little bit. And I actually think I might go to darken. And I'm going to take the strength down. I'm going to make sure I start low enough there. And I might darken the side just a little bit. Something like that. Just kind of hit it a little bit. Again, I just want to draw the viewer into the shot. And my road is my pathway to do that. So. I feel like that's helped. I'm going to actually take the overall amount down a little bit more because I, th I still think it's a little bit too bright. I went a little heavy handed, I think, on the uh, on the brightening, but that's uh, the overall amount is helpful. And of course, you can go back and erase if you want. But let me turn this off. If you look at that before, you know, it's it's not having the same impact for me. And now after you can see how that that road being much brighter really leads you more into the photo. And for me also, you know, it's really dark on the left and the right. The sky is dark, but has obviously patches of brightness because of the uh, the highlights um, and just the light there. And so I like how the brighter road is kind of leading you into the photo, but also leading kind of to that brighter sky with the dark mountains in the distance and the dark kind of edges. That's a uh, that's just kind of how I think about it. It's really about the light and the details, right? In this case, no color. But I think I was able to make a, a nice impact on this photo. And if you look at the before and after, you can see how that move with the composition tool has really brought those mountains forward and given me a bit more impact, I think, in the photo. I kind of like how that's done uh, or how it's impacted the, the shot there, but also, you know, it's brought the clouds. It all just feels closer, in other words. Almost like I did a, a bit of a zoom with a, a long telephoto lens and got some compression in the shot. I, I like how that's kind of impacted the shot. So that's uh, pretty nice. And that's my edit overall. There it is before. Uh, you know, everything seems a little, little bit further and that sort of thing. And now things are closer. I think composition tool was the key here for that, of course. Uh, but also just managing the light, getting a little bit brighter pathway, a little bit crispier there, and a little bit darker on the sides. And of course, that ominous sky with the clouds worked out for me. That's some tips and some things I think about when I'm editing road shots. 
Hope it gives you some ideas in any shots that you may have as well. Of course, mountains and dramatic clouds help if you're looking for a dramatic photo. We don't always have that, but these are still some things to think about in terms of managing the light and the detail and things like that. So hope it helps, my friends. Thanks for watching. I'll be back soon with another video. You guys take care of yourselves, and until then, adios.